Look at us. Here we are again. Here we are again for another round of the Negan Saga. Watch my other video, Last Day on Earth, if you haven't already. You know, last time we did this, you said that I talked too much. This time you best hope I never stop talking. Because when I do, when I do something very terrible is gonna happen. This was the beginning of how Negan became. He's always been the way he is, even before the apocalypse, but on a more controlled level. There was this guy. This guy, he had, uh, he had one of those voices you can't unhear. And being completely obnoxious. So my beautiful wife, Lucille, she gets up and politely asks him if he could keep it down so she could hear her song. Let's just say he chose poorly. So now I gotta get up. Negan is a well-written and fleshed out character. In season six, seven, and possibly eight, we first see the ugly and frightening side to Negan. You can cry. Doing that. Oh, look at that. Taking it like a champ. Then the bad with the ugly. Is that you, Rick, underneath all that man bush? But that's not you anymore. Is it? Nope. Whatever happened to that sick girl? That seemed like a hell of a stressful night for her. The way she was carrying on, she was married to number two, right? Careful how you're looking at me, Rick. Widows, especially ones that look like that, are special. I love them. Right after their husbands go, they are just... I don't know if Negan is being callous or simply testing Rick here, but given the fact he does this to married couples, I'm inclined to believe he's being genuine. Do you care to pay your respects? Holy crap! You are creepy as shit, sneaking up on me wearing that collar with that freaky ass smile. Finally evolving to indifference. I'm Father Gabriel. She didn't make it? But this must really suck for you guys. Number one, that was on me. No choice there. Lessons had to be learned. But number two, that didn't need to happen. At least here he's showing reasonable answers to his actions. But he does go straight back to bad Negan. I was going to ask her to come back with me. Oh, I know what you're thinking. How could I have a shot? Guy that just bashed your husband's head in. Believe me, everyone is thinking the same. <laughs> You'd be surprised. This is completely deluded if he thinks that Maggie would willingly accept any terms of endearment, that her only goal would be to kill him. But don't get it wrong about this, as Negan, being the way he is, does not tolerate any such behavior towards women that aren't willing. I should introduce myself. I'm David. I was the guy that gave the rope to the guys that tied you up. There's just all kinds of fun and interesting things you can do with rope. This is one of Negan's men in the sanctuary and it's clear what his intentions are with Sasha. Tell me how thirsty you are. Go to hell. Without question, that's a solid ironclad no. Fighting is just gonna make it last longer. This is when Negan appears in the doorway and we don't know much about him or how he tolerates this kind of stuff. Hey! What the hell are you doing in here? Do you really think I need you to answer that? I can see that you're trying to this woman, aren't you? This is some unacceptable behavior. It was against the rules here. I wouldn't want to be somewhere where it wasn't. And right there is the absolute zero tolerance and understanding of Negan's mindset. Not only does he not tolerate the unlawful act, but even in the apocalypse, this is unacceptable as he prominently states he wouldn't want to be anywhere where it was accepted. Someone in charge who let something like that fly. David, you really crossed the line here. I'm sorry, sir. You know what? I do not accept your apology. Not only does he kill David, he also turns into a walker. Negan is many things to a lot of things, but he's not any of those things David wanted to do to Sasha. And this is shown again in different circumstances. Brandon here is a big fan of Negan and the saviors that are now long gone, except for Negan. This is Negan, he's always messing with people. Keeping them in line. 
So I realized it was a test. It's gonna get a lot more dangerous from here on out. That's what you said to me. You wanted to make sure that I had the balls to do what had to be done. No, Brandon, you wanker. Negan had never done anything to anyone unless he was sending a message or a retaliation of some kind. But he would never harm kids. We are presented with a strong, dominant character at first that over time had evolved. We bear witness to a character that now accepts his place and the wrongs he had written. Never thanked you. It's too easy. Believe a better story about me than the one you've been telling. That when it mattered, I did something right. And it wasn't to prove anything. It wasn't to get anything in return. Hell, it wasn't even to save my own ass. It was to save all you. You all are better than me. And if you think I don't know that, then you haven't been paying attention. Over time, Negan was no longer the badass, insensitive, ugly one we witnessed in Last Day on Earth. Time is a healing factor, and one that Negan had to serve in captivity for eight years after his armies were wiped out. So you remember me? Of course I do. Get on your knees. I remember you screaming in that clearing. It's always gonna settle this. You mean how I cracked open his skull and popped out his goddamn eyeball? How I bashed his big, beautiful brains into the ground over and over while you and his little friends watched? Is that what you mean? This may sound and act like Negan as he brags and provokes Maggie, which doesn't seem she needs any more motivation to end Negan at this point. Have your justice. Kill me. This is strange coming from someone who's never bent his will to anyone, nor would accept his fate if the old Negan still existed. I want to see you in the light. Come on. Kill me. You not have it in you? This is what you came here for. You kill me! What we are eventually presented with is a weak, old, emotional, and suicidal Negan. That any of his old self is truly long gone. Tell me! Why should I? So I can be with my wife. So I can be with the seal. I have to be dead. I can't do it. I've tried. I can't. Get back in your cell. No. No. I came to kill Negan. And you're already worse than dead. Negan had really come full circle, from leading the saviors, taking from others, controlling people with fear, to now an old, withering man without an army. In stark contrast to his humble beginnings. You know when people get so angry they say they see red? That shit is actually true. When this asshole comes at me, all I see is red. It's like I am looking at the world through blood. There were consequences to me seeing red. Seeing red was a bad thing then. I was a bad man. Then, now, when I see red, it's just a question of what I am capable of. And well, man, I hate to break it to you. See, I am starting to think that I am capable of damn near anything. So this, this is for not killing me. Negan always maintained that he did what he did to show an example to others, but when we witnessed it firsthand, this is a man that enjoyed the brutality. Blame was beautiful. I never love anyone like that again. I remember his smile, his goodness. But when I look at you, all I see is that back coming down on his head. Blood running down his face. I hear calling for me. And I hear you mocking him while he's dying. Sorry. I can't forgive you. And that's my conclusion of Negan and his redemption story. He is not Negan anymore. Or at least the man with the bat who saw red and the world in blood. Maggie is the only one who can forgive him, no matter our opinion on this. She loved Glenn, and Negan crudely ended his life, while Maggie watched him do it. So her coming this far and being able to sit with him and talk is a huge step, and we can see just how much shame Negan is showing, as well as hurting for her forgiveness. 
Thanks for watching and please check out my movie scene critic playlist for all things movies and Negan shorts.